Good evening. Uh, I'm Colm Colgan and you're watching the Business and Enterprise Show, Ireland's only web-based business TV programme with over 2 million views in over 200 countries. And as always, they come to you live from the Top of Town Studios in downtown Cavan. Now, let's be honest, we all come up with business ideas and we all say, wouldn't it be great if we did this or great if we did that? But then we generally have a couple of pints or have our tea or watch Coronation Street, do nothing about it. However, that's not what happens to tonight's guest. She saw a problem, created the solution, and has turned it into a business. Margot Fleming of Book Splits, you're very welcome. Thanks, Colin. Hi, how are you? Now, before we start off talking about Book Splits, tell us a little bit about Margot Fleming. Well, I don't know how far to go back, Colin, but I'll go back to Obviously when I left school. Obviously, you won't school. be going back too I won't go far. Right back. Let's I won't be go honest, the whole way. a young one like you. How, how, how about leaving school? Uh, when I left school, I joined Bank of Ireland and I worked with them for nine years in branch banking. And then I took a two-year career break and I went travelling around the world and working in different places and backpacking around. And then I came back. What exotic countries did you visit? Um, well, I worked in Israel, um, Turkey, Greece, America, Paris, London. Wow. Frankfurt, a few, so a few. I worked. You say yes, you, I did. You, I did. You I traveled around the world. Now, when you I say I worked around the world, I, I have spoken to people <laughs> and say, oh, "Yeah, travel around the world, fantastic. Where'd you go? Oh, well, I went to South Africa. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Where else? Well, well that was it. <laughs> you know, that's that really. But what you did is definitely traveling around the world. Yeah, I moved. I moved around, and, and as I say, when I worked, I kind of worked. Obviously, I waitressed, um, chambermaid. Uh, au pair, teaching English, anything, office mm. work, anything that I uh, just to kind of so I could survive for those two years. So I then came back to the bank. I suppose I was kind of looking for a third year, but they kind of said it's make your mind of time. So mm. I came back. I came back to branch banking. And at that stage, I decided I would like to do something else. And I went just I just studied interior design um, and I felt that was the way I was going to go and then I moved into a different area, I applied for a job in a different area of the bank and it was in international banking and I was then a rep for that and I was on the road a lot and whatever and I really enjoyed that. So I did that for 10 years, so I never went near the interior design and then I decided then in the meantime I'd gotten married and had some children and I decided I would like to stay at home with my kids. So I've actually been at home for the last 12 years with my children. Uh, I did do some interior design over the last 12 years, but mainly I have been at home. Mm. So and you left the bank 12 years ago, so we I can blame nothing that nothing, was happened nothing. in the past six or seven years on you. Nothing. You're nothing you, you, I'm, I'm clear. I'm, you're I'm, clear. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a yeah, guilt-free conscience. So, um, yeah, so I suppose being at home, I have four children, and I, I suppose I've been giving out for years about this, and obviously you see it very clearly mm. when you're at home and you're dropping your children. I had them walking to school so in primary giving school. Out about? Giving out about the weight of heavy school bags, Colin. I kind of, yeah, just uh, watching them, driving them because of the weight. Not that we live within walking distance of school, but because of the weight of the school bags, I ended up driving them, and I had them walking in primary school, and then obviously going back to, to driving them in secondary school, just, you know, mm crazy when you want them to have that independence. So I eventually decided, and for years I'd been saying to them, I'm going to cut those stupid books in half because I just felt why carry, particularly for junior search, why carry a three-year book for every day for three years when you actually aren't going to use the whole book. So I then set about trying to figure out a way to do that because I know lots of people, but it's obviously, it's a very obvious solution, but I don't think, any, I don't nobody's ever done it before. So I then decided I'm going to figure out a way to do it. So based on how secondary, particularly secondary schools uh, books are bound, um, they're bound in what they call signatures, uh, so they're little sections of pages. So if you cut between those sections of pages, obviously to the nearest halfway point of a book, the mm. book stays intact. It just, it won't fall apart. It, a lot of books, like if you look at, think about a paperback book, if you bent it backwards, there are individual pages glued along the spine, the pages would fall out. Whereas with a school book, because it has to withstand a lot of wear and tear, it's bound differently. So that is kind of the secret. So if you split the book in the right, in the correct place, the book stays intact. And then I um, developed these special covers, which are rigid plastic. They're transparent and they're self-adhesive. And you just apply them to each half of the book. Yeah, you see it developed. Well, I, I didn't just kind of come to you I for a second. <laughs> I, I don't know how many <laughs> times they had to try and figure out the light bulb before it worked. <laughs> well, so you I got the idea. Oh, I, I'm splitting, splitting the books them. in half. That's the easy bit, just and you, and you figured out exactly how to do them so that the book didn't fall apart. Smashing, you have two books in half. Now, was it then you realised that I'm going to need a cover, or did you have the plan from 
No, I had a start. different plan. You had uh, a my, different plan. My original plan was to actually, I bought, I, I researched lots of different types of binding machines. And I went out and I bought a very expensive binding machine. I was so convinced this was the way to go. And I had a school locally that were very, you know, they were thrilled with the idea. And they said, absolutely, pilot it in our school and whatever. So they were hugely supportive. What school was that? That was East Glendalough School in Wicklow Town. Never does the money half get Never does the money term, exactly. So well done. Yeah. For, uh, so promoting entrepreneurship yeah. in Wicklow. Yeah, well, also then I approached my another school, the Dominican College in Wicklow Town as well. Mm. And they were equally supportive. So basically what I, I initially did, I went into the schools and I presented it to the parents at an AGM or you know a, a parent evening and then I took the books I split them in half and then I rebound them using the binding machine and mm. then I gave them back but I kind of discovered that that I couldn't ever kind of grow that or you know expand a business like that where I physically had to get hold of the books so then I realized I had to come up with a I, DIY again, solution. Again show my stupidity what does a binding I know it binds books but how does a binding machine bind books? This was what they call a thermal binding machine so literally I split the books in half and I put in these kind of strips that had a, um, a glue on them and they literally covered over the spine of the book and thermally you're bound. You're putting together a presentation for somebody on a smaller yes. scale. Yes, so yes. yes. Now, now yeah. I know the ones. Yeah. 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 So it's like a document binding machine, but it worked really, really well for the school books because it, it formed a new, it, a new spine on the books. But it also kind of gave me the problem of trying to uh, code the books then. I had to kind of consider color coding each. I, I did them in different colors. So if it was French, I did two, the two halves in red and the, the Irish, the two halves in blue or whatever, the English two halves in green. So that was how I did it initially. But I realized that I couldn't expand the business at mm. all uh, at that because I would ha physically have to get hold of the books or physically travel around. I was going to travel around in a van around the country and call <laughs> schools and have this like binding system. In, 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 in the old days, when somebody <laughs> travel around the place, have your lawnmower sharp. And yeah. There was Margot going to turn up in her van saying, have your book split have your books and split. rebind it. But I actually knew, even though, you know, you let yourself go down that road for a while, you just know realistically that's never going to happen. And it just would have been just something. It, it was just too much of a, of a, um, on an unrealistic proposition. So then I just kind of kept thinking and thinking about how I could figure out how to get a cover. Like what I had been using when I was using the binding machine was uh, those acetate sheets to cover those inside pages of the book because once you split it in half, you're left with two inside pages which mm. are flimsy, so you need to protect those. So I had been protecting them with an acetate. You know those kind of, of a hard sheet that you would use if you were binding documents, you would put it at the front and the back. Yeah. So I was using those. And then, I don't know, I just was looking and looking and looking and then I kind of came up with, well, you know, if I could stick it directly onto the book and make it more um, secure and whatever. And that's kind of how the whole thing came about. And so your, 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 the binding process, sorry, the, 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 the uh, self-adhesive cover, w w w did that work on your first attempt or did you have several No, 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 several that worked. Issues? No, I, um, that, that did work on my first attempt. Um, yeah, I got a company uh, to manufacture them, like on, in the pack that you'll see, um, it's one size fits all, so you just trim it to size. So it's a very standard, it's, it's a very simple solution. It's a, mm. As I said already, it's a very obvious solution to the school bag problem, but the actual solution in applying the covers is very simple. Um, and yeah. Now, that's before we, we find it. out more about the business, we, we, we might see it in action. You have some samples there to I bring have some us. Samples. And, 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 and best. Um, uh, television shows. You've, you've one you've prepared earlier. One I prepared earlier. These are just two. This is just a book. I'm gonna take this one here. That's kind of heavy. Um, basically, this is just the book. It's in two halves. Um, as you see, the book isn't damaged. It's just in two halves. Um, and the covers. Th this is the inside. The original kind of so inside it's page. It's and it's now it's, it's rigid. A good, it has a good stiff front page. It's yeah. not your yeah. And the same with the other half. It's exactly the same. And basically that's it. There's also a rebinding strip in the pack because again, from doing market research, a lot of people were concerned about the resale value of the books. So I included a rebinding strip so they can put both parts back together if they want to sell it on. Now, I piloted this over the last year in different schools mm. and that obviously was kind of the, the how people felt. But now recently people are actually saying, you know what, the book, we don't even need the rebinding strip. The book actually has added value if it's split in two parts so that somebody who was buying a second hand book would actually be delighted to buy it 
with this already done, yeah. uh, with the that value, added value to it. So it's not such a thing. I think the biggest obstacle is actually splitting the book, you mm. know, and getting people to just get their head around the idea that it's actually okay to split a book. Mm. I think we've all kind of grown up being told mind your books, don't write on them, protect them and all oh, the rest of it. And I'm coming along saying, ah, don't worry about that, just split them <laughs> in half. But <laughs> it actually, I mean, uh, what I, the message I'm trying to get out is it, it's your health, it's your child's health. Yeah. And what price can you put on that? And this is a school book with a limited lifespan. And much as and all, as we would like to think that this book will go on and on for a long time, this book, they will have moved on to the next edition yeah. and it'll be going in the bin or the recycling. So really, when you consider your health, and obviously the the fact that the book has yeah. a limited lifespan it that should help people cut it mm. I, you know split it because it's now that particular book there that, that's yeah. already split mm. is a soft back can you can you split a hardback book no it all depends it's all based on the binding of the of the book and as i say most school books are bound in this way in yeah. what they call little signatures so these are just little sections of pages that are uh, little segments that are glued together along the spine. So when you're actually splitting the book, you're not splitting or cutting the pages, you're actually just uh, cutting the glue. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the page is bunched together. The ca bunched little together, pages bunched yeah. together, yeah. Well, that's what they look like when they're done. Yeah. Maybe we might see now how it's done. Okay. Absolutely. So I brought one along here. Live on TV. Live on TV. So I suppose the first step is to just to see how many pages are in your school book and in this particular one there are 390. As you see this is a fairly wrecked book um, but y obviously you can do this on old or new books and obviously yeah. you can do it at any stage during the school year. So this is 390 pages so half of that is 150 and 40 is 190. So Look you go it's not a maths book. It's not, it just it's as people well. will be given out, you've not been able to figure it out that so quickly. <laughs> so I've gone to page 190, but in actual fact, when I look at the signatures, and I don't know if you can look at a camera, you've got to actually split it to the nearest whole signature. So the nearest signature, whole signature is actually the page before that, which is 188, yeah. 89. So I just had marked that there. So literally, I don't know if I can show that to a camera. Yeah, um, yeah. And as you can see there, you've been picked up. So if you can see on the no, you, sorry, no turn, turn turn towards the camera there. Oh, That's sorry. it. Yeah. And they, there are the pick little up, sections yeah. of pages. Yeah. Not so sure. if you cut, that's that. So I'm actually just cutting the glue. That's really all I'm doing. So if I take this here. Um, a table, or sorry, a newspaper is a very good idea to protect your table. So I'm sure everybody has that at home. A craft knife or you a Stanley knife. You wouldn't the Anglo-Celt though, that's only for cabin people. They went, and they mightn't have a nice pink. I get such slagging about my pink um, Stanley knife. A girly Stanley knife. A girly knife. Stanley knife. So if you just can see there, if I bend that back, you can actually see the pages where you split it. It, 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 it it's very obvious when you actually go and yeah, examine them. Very I can few see it from here, absolutely. Have examined them. So it's the glue that I'm actually splitting rather than the page. So I suppose just start gently because it, it can be quite daunting splitting a book for the first time. And again, I suggest to people practice on a Nargis catalogue or a phone book or something just to get the feel of what it's like. And, and when apart from if you practice on a, on a phone book, It'll give the phone book something to do these days. Most people's yes. phone books are still in the plastic wrapper <laughs> that they came in. Exactly. Now, I hope this works Works now. It always has. So I'm just going to score it. Just one. It usually takes maybe two or three cuts, and it's better to kind of go do several ones until you're absolutely sure. It'll find its own kind of groove. Um, So it's not Here one big, it's not one big chunk. It, it's just some nice gentle uh, slashes with a knife. That's it. Now I'm going to have to be very honest because this was an old school book, and as you see, it's very battered. It was my son's school book. You can see it's really battered. Did you battered. not take care of it? It didn't. On live television, split. you're giving out about your son not looking after his I'm books. <laughs> I've split so many books at this stage, I'll tell you, I can't be paying 30 and 40 euro for every one I did. So maybe the cover was kind of coming away a little bit. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. As you see, all the pages are intact. So if you look at that, there's the book. So it's next step perfect. is, now so that we split our two books. Get rid of the newspaper. And keep one half of the book. Then these are the covers. 
So you get two front covers that have a, um, a flexible spine and two back covers. So the first part is you just remove this strip and line it up, just keeping it back a little bit back from the uh, spine of the book because you want the flexible part to go with that. So that's lined it up there. And then you just peel away this. And that's that. And then you get the scissors. I'm going to do this really quickly because obviously I don't want to take forever. So I'm just going to trim this. But you can take your time doing it. But you basically just trim. It looks a bit easier than having to uh, cover the kids' uh, books it's with wallpaper like I used to have to do. Well, it's far easier. I mean, a lot of that kind of flimsy plastic is very difficult mm. to cover school books and there's air bubbles. There are no air bubbles. Actually, some people are using these covers just for covering their school books. So this is the second part. Uh, so again, just line it up, keeping it back from the spine. Take that away. Now you can see my the cover of my book because it's an old book is coming away. But by applying this now, it'll actually make it even stronger. Stronger. And it'll hold it all together. Now it's come away completely. I should have brought a brand new book with me, but this is this is it, the reality of what people will experience. It hasn't come completely away, but when they're doing it themselves. And then you just peel off that. As simple as that. That's one half. So there's your inside page now becomes the cover. And again, will I do the second half? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's, 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 exactly, it's, it's, it's exactly it's exactly the exactly same. the same. Yeah. So basically, that's it. As I say, yeah. then you've that's it. And then hopefully, um, you know, the teachers in a, in some of the schools that are currently. Well, that, 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 that's what I was going to say. That's great, and uh, that you have now effectively have the weight of your your, your 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 children's school books. But how are the teachers reacting? Well, any of the schools that I have approached directly, they're hugely supportive of it. Um, some of the teachers schedule the homework, or sorry, s advise the students in advance which half they can leave at home mm. and which half they need to have in class with them. Some of the books, particularly for junior search, are three-year books. So um, some of the teachers have been able to say leave the second part at home for a whole year so the student doesn't even have to think about it. They just bring the, the first half. Yeah, as um, if they would be thinking of their school books anyway, you know, unless things have changed since I was bringing kids to school, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, uh, but I, what I say to students is if they're not sure, some, uh, particularly some first year students, they're kind of a little bit afraid to ask the teachers, what can I split my book or what page will I do it on and so on. If they want to do it themselves, I mean, obviously, if they're their own school books, they can obviously do that. But I suggest to take both parts to class with them, but they only have to carry home the half that they need for homework each night and then carry back the same half. Mm. So even if they're not sure if the teacher approves or if the teacher skips around the book or isn't kind of prepared to tell them in advance which half to have, as I say, they can still split them, but they only carry home the half that they need each night for homework and leave the other half in the school locker. Yeah. But I ideally, and if this concept caught on, um, there's no reason why teachers, you know, can't tell the students in advance which yeah. half they need. Now, um, I suppose a lot, a lot of people like to sell their books on, well, a lot of parents do, uh, the kids don't really care, but the parents like to sell, sell the, uh, the books on, the part fund next year's or the next semester's uh, books. What sort of reaction are you getting to people who want to buy the books and then find that they're split in two? Well, to be honest, I haven't had that quite yet, uh, Column. Certainly when I was doing my market research, parents were saying, what about resale value? That was always a huge concern. So I included a rebinding strip in the pack so that they can put both parts back together and yeah. sell on. Now, because over the last year I have just been piloting this in schools, it's, this is the first year now that I'm really out there. So, But certainly the feedback, the early feedback that I'm getting from parents now is that it actually has added value. They would be delighted if they're buying a second-hand book to get it already split mm. and with that value already added to the book so yeah. that's d I don't think that's an issue anymore.
Mm. And I suppose another aspect, uh, although not, not coming quick enough, despite many governments and many ministers of education having said they would do it, is book rental schemes. Now, are, are schools prepared to do it, or is it up to the people renting the books, whichever, whoever would have responsibility for the books? But is the fact that a book is rented as opposed to your actual own, where no matter what people say to you, if you want to draw, a picture on it you can you know um, and by the same token if it's your own book you can you can cover whatever way you want or split whatever way you want but if it's rental I'm sure there's some sort of conditions uh, again have you looked at that I to be honest I haven't approached book rentals yet because this is really my first year I decided yeah. I'd focus on people who own their own books but I absolutely intend to approach schools for book rental mm. because these, as you see I mean the books are perfectly protected and um, it would actually probably keep them in better condition for book rentals if they were handing out half a book yeah. and then kind of later the following year or whatever handing out the other half mm. uh, I will certainly be approaching them but I just I wouldn't have had the time to do it for this September I just decided I would try and get it to market get people who have can make that decision for themselves mm. get them to hear about it and i'm just really trying to get the word out at the moment right so we, we know all about the product we've seen it looks like a brilliant idea and i've seen how easy it's done uh as you said we're now trying to get it to market what's your marketing strategy who is it aimed at well i suppose it's aimed at it's both it both aimed at parents obviously of students and uh, I suppose specifically kind of 12 to 15 year olds that junior cert cycle now it's also suitable for the secondary market would be seen the senior cycle the leaving cert cycle mm. it could be it's suitable for third level as well but my the kind of the primary market is the 12 to 15 year olds mm. who have the most number of subjects and they're probably the smallest like children uh, an average 12 year old starting secondary school is weighs between 40 and 50 kilos mm. and that's six stone two and seven stone eight just for people who don't it's recommended worldwide and um, health experts recommend that children should not carry more than 10 percent of their body weight now if you think of that 40 to 50 kilos that's four or five kilos an average secondary school book is one kilo so that's four or five books mm. and th obviously there's no way that's the recommended weight that they should be carrying and yeah. um, i joke you know, I, with most most kids, um, wouldn't be le allowed on a flight, a Ryanair flight, with their school bags the weight of their school bags. <laughs> it's you know, it's it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I weighed my own daughter. My youngest daughter started uh, first year last year, and I just weighed her books, and they were 15 kilos. And I happened to have a sack of potatoes in my kitchen that was seven and a half kilos, and I said, that is f two sacks of potatoes that she is carrying, expected to carry to school, to and from school every day. Mm. And that was just her books. It wasn't her pencil case, copies, hardback notebooks, sports gear, lunch, nothing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, uh, I don't know whether you're stone or kilos or whether you're, oh, but, I, I, but it's over two stone. stone. Yeah, her, yeah. her books, her school books alone were over two stone. Mm. And so it's recommended that they don't carry more than 10% of their body weight. I mean, they shouldn't be carrying more than, than max, like 10, 10 pounds, 10, 12 pounds is what they should be carrying. So obviously, when they have 10, 11, 12 subjects in first, second and third year mm. and they've all the books and the copies and all the bits that go with it, they're all carrying way, way in yeah. excess of that. Now, no, I suppose part of the thing that you're often told, right, you have only geography today and history and English, but kids will tend to bring all their books with them. Yeah. Um, Maybe they just want to get some extra studying in if they eat their lunch quick. You know, I don't think so. I don't so think so. Not my children. Yes, yeah, oh mine. <laughs> Will they be need to be educated to leave half of the books that they're Behind. going to bring anyway, literally? I suppose, you know, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, obviously the government, uh, the Department of Education, they have, there have been so many different parent groups that have approached them over the years, mm. different ministers for education, and they've commissioned reports and whatever, and all the findings are basically it's up to each individual school. Provide lockers, schedule homework, whatever. But the that's not happening. All you have to do is walk down the street mm. any day in any town in Ireland and look at the kids and the weight that they're carrying and the bags that they can't lift. So I suppose I don't know, like whether we, you could educate the kids yeah. differently or whether, I don't know, like it's just not working. So if, if we'll say junior cycle is your target uh, market, who's your target customer? Is it the parents? Is it the school? 
in, in, at the moment, it's the parents because obviously the parents are the ones who will buy this product. Yeah. Um, I, my intention is now, now that I've kind of gotten it out there and I've get, gotten it off the ground, um, I will be approaching schools directly now into September and October and obviously later on. But that is my intention is to go directly into schools. And just right now, I suppose over the summer, I just felt I needed to get the word out that there is something you can do yourself mm. and really just get the message because out. Because from a sales point yourself. of view, you actually do have two tasks to do. Yeah. First thing you have to do is to let people know this is a brand new concept. It's not a version of something. It's not an improved something. It's a brand new concept. So yeah. you have to do that and then you have to get them used to that concept and then you have to uh, move, it, move it along the sales cycle. Yeah, absolutely, Colin. That's what I've kind of realized recently. Um, I suppose my biggest challenge is because this is a new product and it doesn't exist, I'm creating a market. So I have to kind of get people to be aware of it. Then to get their heads around it, I have to educate the market to actually understand what they can do with this product. Mm. And then I have to try and get them to so buy how it. How do you so get the word out there? You're, uh, you're, uh, you're obviously, and you're very welcome on, on, on our program tonight, but how are you getting the word out there? How well, are I've schools been very getting to find out about I, it? I've been very fortunate over the last couple of weeks. Um, I've been on, I've had lots of radio and in the press, and this is my first TV slot, <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, basically, just sending out press releases, making phone calls, looking at the news, jumping on every opportunity that I can see that would kind of mm. allow me get in and say, here is a solution. I'm getting a lot of tweets. Uh, people, like I've had a couple of phone calls. I was mentioned on, I was actually mentioned on a TV program yesterday. Now, that I wasn't even there and I just felt, yay. Now it's out you there. You know you've made somebody, it when you're getting a mentioned journalist, and you're yeah, not there. Yeah, and I wasn't there. And a journalist actually mentioned it because they were talking about heavy school bags and said, oh, I heard th about this new solution. So I just thought, yay. Um, so, and, and I've had phone calls for pe from people. I actually went to Marley Park Market, Farmer's Market, or yeah, the Farmer's Market last September. And I stood there. I didn't have an awful lot of success. I, I was a very boring stall because all I had were school books. And I think people were kind of trying to avoid me. No kids wanted to come near me. So it's very hard to kind of get your product out there. But anyway, yesterday. Oh, did it surprise you? You, you kids didn't want to come over. No, to imagine with that. School books. Just I imagine don't know. What's that. What's the world coming in to? September. But I got a phone call yesterday from somebody and she actually rang me to say, are you in Marley Park? That somebody had told her that I was in Marley Park a couple of weeks ago. Now it was actually a year ago. But I just thought, oh, that's great. And she had remembered that because now her daughter was in first year and she wanted to know whether I was there or not. So I just think that's fantastic that, you know, you, you plant all these seeds or you're doing all these things and you're thinking uh, there's nothing coming yeah, back. Yeah. And then little by little, I've had a couple of experiences over the last week of things like that. And I'm thinking, OK, all that work that I did 12 months ago and six months ago and three months ago is starting to pay dividends mm. now. Um, obviously, when it's a huge success here in Ireland, will you move it abroad? Yeah, well, I suppose this is a worldwide problem. So I, I don't see that there's any reason why I couldn't actually sell it all over the world or, you know, certainly yeah. looking at the UK market mm. initially. They have similar type of school books <coughs> to us in the way they're bound. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, there's no reason why I wouldn't uh, look at that market as well. Well, it seems like an absolutely fantastic concept. Thanks for coming on the programme. And before you go, you might tell our viewers how uh, they can contact you to get them and how much they'll cost. Well, thank you very much, Colin, you. and thank you so much for for having me on the show. Uh, basically, my website is booksplits.ie and the packs are 4 dollars each and a pack contains uh, two front covers, two back covers and the rebinding strip and a pack does both halves of one book. So it's booksplits.ie. Thank you. So there you go. Uh, kids might be learning uh, too much or maybe not, but the books are too heavy. We've known that since time immemorial. At last, somebody has come up with a practical solution. and uh, It's uh, Margot Fleming of Book Splits who did it. So I've been Colm Colgan. You've been watching this week's edition of the Business and Enterprise Show. Talk to you next week where I promise I will have a tie on. So good night for me and talk to you next week. Bye bye.